Good morning, all you beautiful people. It's a wonderful morning, and I'm in the kitchen making candy today. And I had told y'all that I wanted to make a video on fudge, homemade fudge candy. And that's what I'm going to do today, okay? I already have my pot right here. I have two cups of sugar, and I have six tablespoons of cocoa. Let me show you my cocoa. Okay, just regular Hershey's cocoa. That's what I've got in the pot right now. Okay, I've got it all stirred up real good. Got all of the lumps out of it. That's important before you start adding liquid to it to have that cocoa and sugar mixed up really well. That will help it not to lump so badly when you start adding the liquid into the pot. Okay, now I'm, I get my, my recipe my fudge recipe, it's out of my old Southern Living Cookbook that's falling apart. See the front falling off of it right there? Right here. I don't know if you can see walnut fudge. So you can, this recipe says to put walnuts in it, but I, I use pecans. I've used both. I've used walnuts. I've used pecans. Both of them are fine in this recipe. Okay, so let me... Let me look here at my recipe. I've got to put a few grains of salt. So I just sprinkle a little salt in my, in the palm of my hand. Just a few grains, just like that. Put it in the pot. That's got that. All right. Now, I have got to have two thirds cup of water. So let me go get my water. And I am just going to slowly add this water a little at a time and stir it. I don't want to just go push and dump the whole uh, two-thirds cup of water in there because that's going to cause lumps. So I just stir it in a little at a time. Once I get some liquid stirred in, you get kind of a thick liquid mixture here. Then I can put the rest of the water, just pour the rest of the water in, and I don't have to worry about lumps. Now I've got some potato soup cooking here on the back burner. I just had a taste for some potato soup, so I got that going back there. everything off of the spoon so that if there's any any dry ingredients that haven't mixed in I can get those mixed in okay see we've got just a thick mixture right now and now I can just go ahead and pour the rest of the water in and get this stirred up All right, now let's look at our ingredients. Let me rinse my hand off. Let's look at our recipe here. All right, it says two tablespoons of Cairo syrup, okay? So you want to use the Cairo brand. I have tried other brands and they are inferior. I think they're too watered down but the Cairo brand does really well. So for your candies, I recommend using Cairo, all right? Um, I've got to have two tablespoons of Cairo. Now, I don't measure my Cairo. I just put my bottle over here and just squirt two squirts in it, okay? So I'll just show you what I do. Just one, two, and that's got my Cairo. All right, now I've got to have, I believe it is four tablespoons of butter. 
So let me, okay, I'm gonna have to go get some more butter out of the refrigerator, y'all. All right, here we go. Let's see, this is, I think I'm just gonna use what I got over here. I don't wanna cut that new stick up right now. This is, and see, you can see on the side of these sticks of butter, it measures your tablespoons for you, okay? So you don't have to like get a measuring spoon and try to measure tablespoons. All you have to do is cut it on these lines and it, that will measure your tablespoons for you. So this is about one and a half tablespoons right here. Let's put that in. Got another little piece right here. Okay. That'll make us about two tablespoons right there. All right, I've got some butter right here. Let me get a spoon or, or a knife and just cut off some of this. See, I've got this butter right here. This is actually French butter that my daughter Rebecca brought me from Paris. Okay, so I'm just going to cut off approximately two more tablespoons of butter, put them in my pot, and that will have, I believe, our ingredients that we need right now. Let me go over this. Two cups of sugar, six tablespoons of cocoa, a few grains of salt, two-thirds cup of water, two tablespoons of Cairo, and four tablespoons of butter. That's what we've got in the pot right now. We're going to turn this on just a little bit above medium, and we're going to let this start cooking. Now, I have got to cook this candy until it comes to the soft ball stage. And I don't use a candy thermometer. I actually get a bowl and put water in it and drop some of the candy down in there until and fill of it until it forms a soft ball. So I'll show y'all that. I'll show y'all that as we progress in this recipe. Okay, our fudge is boiling now. Every once in a while, you want to just scrape the sides and stir it. And the reason that I am cooking it on just barely above medium heat is because as the fudge begins to get ready and your liquid, this mixture, this candy begins to thicken up, if you have your if you have your burner, if you have your heat too high, then um, it's going to burn and it's going to stick on the bottom. So that's the reason that I cook it just barely, just a hair above medium. In a few minutes, we'll, we'll test some in our bowl of water right over here and we'll see where we're at. All right, let's test the candy. Got just a little bit on my spoon. I'm gonna drop it over here in this cold water in this bowl. Let's see if it'll hold together. And it won't, it's not even holding together, okay? So we've still got a little while to cook this before it'll be ready. Okay, it's starting to hold together a little bit, but I can't get it up, I can't pick it up. I can pick it up with my fingers, but see, it's just mush. It won't roll into a softball. So we're getting there, but we still got a little way to go. Okay, y'all, I think we're probably pretty close to a softball now. Let me show y'all something real quick. I'm making potato soup, 
like I said, and I'm going to put some Velveeta cheese in it. Y'all remember the Velveeta cheese loaves like this? Do how many of y'all remember the Velveeta cheese fudge recipe? You actually used Velveeta cheese just like this. <laughs> that was back in, ooh, I don't know, the 70s, 80s, something like that. That was a recipe that was popular at one time. Okay, let's test this. I'm going to go ahead and move it off of the burner because if it's making a softball, I don't want it to continue to cook. I got me some fresh water in my bowl because once you test the candy a couple of times, the water warms up. So you want just fresh water out of your tap. You don't want warm water. Okay, I believe we got it, y'all. I believe we're going to have a softball here. I'll bring it over there and show it to y'all. Yes. Yes. Look at here. I can roll this ball around between my fingers. Y'all see that? And, and it's soft. You can smash it. See there? That's our softball. We're ready to go. Okay, let me wash my hands off. It's good because whoever the cook gets to eat the tester pieces of candy. And so that's that's fun and that's delicious. All right. We're going to move over to the counter. Y'all come with me right this way. I've got stuff set up here. Okay, this is our pan that our candy will go in. Now, Spray your pan with a little pan. Get you a paper towel and just kind of spread it out. Have you a light coating. Let's see how that feels. Okay, that should work. All right, we need to get our vanilla in here, and I am using... See if I can scoot down a little closer to y'all. I'm using Mexican vanilla, so instead of using a teaspoon, I'm going to use a half teaspoon because this Mexican vanilla is really concentrated. All right, we got that in there. Let's get our pecans in here or walnuts, whichever one you want to use. I've got a little over a cup, not quite one and a half cups. So you just put however many nuts in your fudge that you want and if you don't like nuts if you don't want nuts in your fudge then you don't have to put any in there let me get another spoon here y'all kind of scrape off my spoon right here so that all those nuts get down in there and get coated good okay now we've got to we've got to Watch this fudge, and as it thickens up, when it gets to the right consistency, you're going to have to turn it out in this pan before it gets too hard to come out of my pot here, okay? And this just takes practice and learning how to do it. I'm just going to stir it. As we stir it, it will cool down. The stirring helps it to cool down. Adding the nuts helps it to cool down. And then right before it gets too hard, we're going to pour it. All right, we better go with it. Yep, there we go. Let's get it spread it out now. Before it gets too hard to spread out. All right, let's get this off of my spoon. Get that in there. All right, y'all, we just got it in there before it got too hard. And there it is, right there. Now, what I need to do is let this fudge cool down some until it is cool enough that I can cut it with a knife 
and it don't just fall apart and tear up. We'll, so we'll do that and then we'll cut it and then we'll flip it out and let y'all look at it. Okay, y'all, the fudge has cooled down enough that it is slicing cleanly. Let me go ahead and slice this for y'all. If you let it get too cool, then it's going to be difficult to slice. So you have to kind of let it get to that right temperature where it's still warm, but it's cooled down enough that your knife will slice cleanly through the, through the candy. All right, there we go, we've got it sliced. Now, now what I wanna do is get a piece of wax paper here. Now, in another video that I was doing where I was cooking divinity, pralines, and fudge all at the same time, I said use freezer paper. That's because you're making all three candies at one time and gonna put them all on the same paper. So you need freezer paper because you have to have freezer paper for pralines. They'll stick to wax paper. But just making this little pan of fudge, you can use a piece of wax paper and that will work fine. Okay, here's the trick. What I'm going to try to do is flip this over, okay, without making too big of a mess. And uh, hopefully that candy will fall out on this paper. And let me set this down over here while I talk to you just a minute because this pan is hot. I wanted to show you, I had this pan sitting on a pot holder on my bar because when you pour the candy in the pan, your pan's gonna get hot. And if you just set your pan straight down on the bar, you may burn your bar and leave a burnt place in your bar. So that's the reason I have a pot holder here. And I wanted to just pass that little tip along to y'all. Okay, here we go. Let's see if we can turn this over. There we go. Let's see what we got. Aha! Uh -huh. Almost all of it come out. We got just a few little pieces that didn't come out. And I'm sure I can persuade those to come out. Let's see if I can just get them to come out just one piece at a time. There we go. And I like to turn my fudge candy upside down fresh out of the pan because the bottom of the candy has a tendency to be a little wet. So I want it to dry well on the bottom. So I just turn my candy upside down like you just saw me out of the pan. I break it all apart and I just let it sit here for, you know, a few hours, whatever and make sure that it's good and dry on the bottom. And then you can flip your candy over and once it's all good and dry and cool, you can put it in a container. It keeps well in a airtight container, some Tupperware or a Ziploc bag. Both of those will work well. Okay, let's get a piece of candy. Let's bring it over there to you. Let you look at it. I'm trying to find a pretty piece. All right, y'all. This is homemade fudge right here. And I am making this for my good friend, Pammy Nelson. She wanted some fudge and divinity. So, Pammy, if you see this video, your fudge is ready. Okay, good folks. We'll see y'all next time with another great recipe.